Good morning, class. <clears throat> Today you're going to have a short lesson on 3.6 with me, and then you'll go do your interactive lesson online. So before I begin, I want you to make sure out of your GoMath book, you grab page 172 and page 173. Pause the video if you need to go grab them. Today we're going to talk about the community of property and multiplication. If you remember the community prop commutative property of addition stated <clears throat> that the order doesn't matter, the sum remains the same. We kind of talked about this um, on Monday when we did our 3.5 lesson. The community property of multiplication states the same thing. When you change the order of the factors, the product remains the same. So you can also think of it as the order property of multiplication. All right. Now, Something else that we have talked about is when we are re representing multiplication using pictures, the order does matter because it needs to match the picture. Okay? The commutative property of multiplication states that the order of the factors doesn't matter in regards to the product, the answer. Okay? So the commutative property says the order of the factors um, doesn't matter, the product will remain the same. The picture will change though. So the picture needs to line up with the problem. So here you can see I have two cages or two groups. So I have two groups of, and how many in each group? One, two, three. Two groups of three equals how many birds in all? Three, six. Okay, now to show the commutative property, we're going to get to six birds grouped a different way. So now we have three cages of two birds each. So three times two is two, four, six. So the pictures are different, which is why the order changes. But the commutative property, once you understand that the order of the factors does not change the product. Okay? All right, let's go all the way down here to the bottom. So we're going <clears> to <throat> write the multiplication sentence for the picture shown, and then we're going to draw our own picture. Here we go. How many groups do we have here? Well, we have three groups. How many in each group? Four. Three groups of four. Count up these totals. Well, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So three groups of four, or three times four, is twelve. But now we want to draw a picture to show the, show the commutative property. So instead of 3 times 4, we're going to have 4 times 3. So that means I need 4 groups of 3. So instead, I'm going to do 4 groups. Okay, there's my 4 groups. And I'm going to do 3 in each group. Four groups of 3 look significantly different than three groups of four, but the product stays the same. Look at B. It's an array, so the first thing you should do is label it. Two rows of one, two, three, four, five. So two rows of five is two times five. What does that total? Well, five, ten. But now I want to show the commutative property. To show that, I'm going to change the order of my factors, which is five times two now. And that means I need to draw a new array because this does not represent 5 times 2. So 5 times 2 would be 5 rows of 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 2 in each row. Because I'm a good mathematician, I'm going to label my array 5 rows of 2, which equals 10. All right, grab page 173. Let's practice some more. It's going to be very important that you learn to start reading your directions very carefully. Write a multiplication sentence for the array. That's all we're doing. So I need to label my array. I have two rows, one, two, three, four, five, six in each row. So two rows of six equals... Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There's my multiplication sentence for my array. 2 rows of 6 is 2 times 6. Now let's go to look at this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Boom. 
one, two, boom. Six rows of two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve equals twelve. What did these two arrays and multiplication sentences just show you? Well, they just showed you the commutative property. Now, go down to number two. Write a multiplication sentence for the model. Then, use the commutative property of multiplication to write a related multiplication sentence. Related, just like you have uh, maybe a brother or sister that you are related to. Okay, it's a relative. All right, you have a connection to them. So the first number sentence we're going to write goes with the picture. The second is going to be a related multiplication sentence that we're going to use the commutative property of a multiplication to write. So first, let's write <clears throat> the multiplication sentence that goes with the picture. So how many groups do we have? Two. How many in each group? Four. How many in all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Two groups of four equals eight. Two times four equals eight. So now we need to write a related multiplication sentence, which means we're going to use the commutative property. So we switch the order, because that's what the commutative property says, and the related multiplication sentence would be four times two equals eight. To write the related multiplication sentence, you're just going to switch the order of your factors. That's it. Okay? All right, let's do the next one. Number three, it's an array, so label it. One, two, three, four, five. How many in each row? One, two, three. Let's write the sentence. Five rows of three equals how much? Well, 5, 10, 15. 5 rows of 3 equals 15. Okay. Now I need to write a related multiplication sentence using the commutative property. So the related fact would be switching the factors. So now I have 3 times 5 equals 15. The product remains the same. All right, number four. Let's label our array before we start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so we have an array that shows us four rows of five, which total five, 10, 15, 20. Okay, now I'm gonna need a different color because I wanna write a related multiplication sentence. Okay, so that means I'm going to write um, a sentence using the commutative property of multiplication. So I'm going to change the order of the factors. 5 times 4 equals 20. That's all. Okay, let's go down to on your own. Write a multiplication sentence for the model. Then use the commutative property of multiplication to write a related multiplication sentence. First step. Number five, label your array. Go ahead. Okay, write your multiplication sentence that goes along with your array. Okay, now I want you to write the related multiplication sentence. We're using the commutative property right underneath it. All right, let's see how you did. You should have a three here, a four here, three rows of four equals 12. Is that what you had? If not, make corrections. Then I'm gonna write the related multiplication sentence. Community property says the order doesn't matter. So I'm gonna flip my factors. Four times three equals 12. Now I want you to pause the video and I want you to do number six and number seven. Go ahead. All right, if you're back, then that means you've completed number six and you've completed number seven.
here we go. How many groups? Two. How many in each group? Five. Two groups of five equals ten. Your related multiplication sentence should have been five times two equals ten. They're related. They have the same factors, just in a different order. On number seven, you should have labeled three rows of one, two, three, four, five, six, which would create the sentence three times six equals 18. If you don't have that, you need to erase and correct. Your related fact should have been six times three equals 18. Okay. Now, on the bottom, we're going to use reasoning to answer these or fill in these blanks. Now, you might think, oh my gosh, algebra, I can't do algebra. Algebra is in high school. Well, it's not technically algebra, but it is helping build the skills you will need in the future for algebra. So it is building blocks to algebra, okay? We're going to write the unknown factor. That's the factor that's blank, the factor we don't know. Now, we're going to use what we know. We know that the commutative property says the order doesn't matter and the product remains the same. So we're going to use that information to help us fill these out. So that means 3 times 7 equals or is the same as blank times 3. You're just going to flip them. 4 times 5 equals 10 times blank. Now you don't have your multiplication facts memorized yet, so I'm going to help you out. 4 times 5 equals 20. So what do you think 10 times what would equal 20? Draw a picture. Skip count with tens. If you skip count it by tens, you should have said 10, 20. Two tens would equal 20. So 10 times 2 would make these equal. Same here. You don't know your facts, so I'm going to tell you that 3 times 6 is 18, which actually you should know because it's right here. Now I want you to figure out what times 9 equals 18. We'll start skip counting by 9s. 9, 18. So 2. See, you guys can figure these out. They're like puzzles. I always like the use reasoning section because it is, it's like a game. So let's figure this one out. 4 times 9, well, you don't know it, but I'm going to tell you, is 36. 6 times what is 36? Okay. Well, let's start skip counting by 6. So 6 plus 6 is 12. Plus 6 is 18. Plus 6 is 24. Plus 6 is 30. Plus 6 is 36. So I have 5, or sorry, 6. So 6 times 6 equals 36. <clears throat> See how our skip counting is helping us? Number 12. You don't know your facts yet, so I'll tell you that 4 times 6 is 24. Although I'm sure you could figure it out by drawing a picture or skip counting. So I want to know what times 8 is 24. Well, let's skip count by 8. So we've got 8, 16, 24. So 3 times 8 is 24. And one more. 5 times 8 equals 8 times 5. They just told us that, didn't they? Same factors. Okay, now you're going to go into Think Central and you're going to complete the interactive video lesson for 3.6. Please complete this before you do your assignment. As always, you can stop your interactive video lesson once you reach the red whistle. Have fun learning.